and we're going to do a replay analysis, but I'm going to do it live on stream. And um, where is it? It is that one. Yeah, we're going to watch that game. Um, so I played this game earlier today, and it's quite an interesting game. It is Dark Elves, me versus uh, Kemri, uh, them. Um, I'm playing Downhill TV a bit. Um, but the teams are relatively comparable. Things that I guess you should know if you've not been watching the series on this uh, is my team have got three Mighty Blow Blitzers and his team has got, yeah, you can see the result, um, and his team has got uh, a Tackle Mighty Blow piling on uh, Blitzer. He's also got a Dirty Player and he's got a Bribe. Um, things to note, I suppose, first of all, so st strategically what he should be trying to do is he should be blitzing with the killer player all the time. He should then be trying to run over and foul something and knock it on the floor. My team contains an awful lot of bludge players, so um, it's important that the tackle player is hidden at all times um, and then he can extract value out of it. I've only got 12 players and um, Camry are a funny team because the Tomb Guardians are armor 9, but the Skeletons are only armor 7. So um, if I can continually pummel the skeleton Skeletons, um, there's a decent chance that with my Mighty Blow, um, I might start to be able to pick players off uh, and get some removals. So he needs to hide the skeletons and he needs to push the Tomb Guardians into contact. Uh, on this game, um, I think I get choose to receive and he sets up quite a long way back and we'll watch it from my point of view, but we'll skip the setup phase. So that's, that's his setup. Um, and that's my setup. Um, I am going to pause it for a second and just talk very quickly about the uh, the setup um, because it's a bit of a weird one, um, which is that if you notice, there's no one to go and fetch the ball. And the reason for there's no one to go and fetch the ball is because he's set up so far back, I don't care about the ball in turn one. I want to score on turn eight strategically, so I don't give a shit where the ball goes. I might not even bother to go pick it up on turn one. That's how much I don't care. Um, and the rest of this is that I've got Mighty Blow, Mighty Blow, Mighty Blow. So I've got Mighty Blow hit there, Mighty Blow hit there, and Mighty Blow hit there. Um, but if I roll pushes, I'll push it to there, I'll push it to there, and then the Witch Elf can come round and surf it off, and I can do the same on the other side. So I've set up for a dual surf, because people have given me the opportunity to surf stuff by leaving them players there. So if I get the surf, great. If I don't, great too. Uh, there's not a lot to see on this one other than we get a knockdown and a knockdown and a knockdown, I think. Um, but not a lot happens. Um, more interested at the end of this turn. So I'll skip, th skip through the boring parts. Um, it's how do I set up? So while well, the blocks guys are going through, um, what are we looking to do is blitz down one or two Tomb Guardians. I can't remember if I go left or right. But I want to hit one of these two Tomb Guardians on two dice because I've got block. Um, and look like and pretend like I want to go and score. I don't want to score, but I want to pretend like I want to go and score. Um, so he's got to split his team up, so I can then pick around in the holes. Because um, what I don't want to do is stand all my players on the halfway line, because then he would just commit all his players forward, and it'd be dead easy for him to defend it. So I'm deliberately um, trying to fake like I want to go score. Hello, Hargrim. Uh, one other thing to notice on this team, which is quite quite special, is this throw raw here. Look, he's got a block double agility increase throw raw, which meant that because he got a wizard, I had to be very careful what happened with the ball. So, at the end of the turn, I went and tried to fetch the ball, and look, we faked a score over this side, um, and I even contemplated bringing the ball that way. So he stood up this guy, and he stood up this skeleton. At the start of the turn, I thought, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Take the Tomb Guardian with Guard, put it in there. Um, take the Bludge Tomb Guardian, put it in there. Go and put some other players in and just put players in here so I can't hit the Skellingtons. Because if I hit the Skellingtons, I've already had three Mighty Blow hits with no removal. If I get another three Mighty Blow hits, I might get a removal. Um, so you've got to go and support the Skellingtons. They're there as the, as like zombies. They're the line fodder to go and fill stuff in rather than um, players in their own right. Are the Orcs okay? Um, one of them didn't get back on the team bus we were. And I was surprised that that wasn't a blitz. 
uh, sorry, it wasn't wasn't a foul. Um, he does do some fouls later in the uh, in the half, I think. Um, but I was very surprised that that wasn't a foul. And he comes in and he gets a removal straight away. Bang. And I was a little bit foolish because I left my agility five player just lolling around on turn one. So that's that's my own fault. Um, and it was right of him to pick on that guy. I'm not sure I would have want to pick on him from there because he's trapped. I got a mighty blow dude there. Um, and this could this could be painful. So I've got a free mighty blow hit here, a free mighty blow hit here, and I've got a free mighty blow blitz somewhere, which is blatantly going to be on his killer. So that's hit number four. No removal. Haha, <laughs> okay, how you doing? Um, this was a mistake putting this player in because I could have had two dice on the dirty player um, relatively comfortably and didn't make it because I blocked myself off. Yeah, your players like had some form of weird force field around them. If I ever wanted to go near them when they got the ball, it just went wrong. And this was this was not great. I should have just mocked this out because I'm giving away a mighty blow hit. So I've been carefully counting all my mighty blow hits up, and I just hand a free mighty blow hit to the to the enemy. Not a good idea. So uh, have stacked up though a free mighty blow hit next turn, a mighty blow hit that th there, and I'll have my mighty blow blitz. So I'll be on turn three. I should get three more hits. My tactical clever moves fail, my yellow moves never worked every time. Yeah, that's always the way though, isn't it? We're just we are watching this because I think in the second half especially, um, there's there's some quite interesting surfing going on in the second half. Um, and the positional play to be able to spot it is quite interesting. And there's a very interesting thing that happens on turn eight, which um, I'd like to go back and have a look at and see whether or not you can solve it in a better way. That's unfortunate. That was me giving him that hit there. So that, that's my own fault. That's a hit that I didn't need to give away. Um, and I would say here that this, this guy, um, by not being anywhere near the ball carrier, the wizard is much less threatening because... If you think about this from a strategic point of view, the wizard is of no relevance whatsoever this next turn for me because the ball's here. Don't care. I can do what I want. So I even bring the ball forward a bit because I might want to hand the ball off and score if things start to go wrong. Um, but I don't need to um, be all the way at the back hiding the ball because there's no pressure on it. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a really nice chap. I really, really I, I like this guy. He's a really nice guy. Um, we played him twice today. The second game, I diced the absolute snot out of him. Um, the one thing I think I would say in both of these games is that um, I picked up a lot of blocks. So, that's... Three mighty blow hits in this turn as well, and this is this is the one thing I suppose I would I would think about from my point of view is I've been actively trying to find the mighty blow hits each turn. So you notice he ran off, he ran off and stood next to something. So if it stands up, I can have a mighty blow guy. Another one there. So I'm looking to constantly base with two of the mighty blow, and then with the third, that's my guy that does the blitz. Um, and throughout this half, that is a constant thing that you, should, you know, I'm trying to do. And if you want to translate that into your own gameplay, take your most dangerous players and where you can, if you can, base their players up in a in a way that is letting you win that confrontation so that you can um, addi get additional value. Jenny, how you doing? You survived, by the way. Game one of nine. Is Andy still talking? Yes. And he drops a casual foul on this guy. 
uh, bad things. Now, I might skip forward a couple of turns here. Or I'll just skip forward this turn. So we've got a mighty blow hit there, we've got one there, and then I'm going to blitz that down. Because value-wise, that makes an awful lot of sense. So I'm just going to skip forward here. We blitz that one, we knock that one over, and we knock that one over. Um, it gets more interesting in the, towards the end of the half. So I'm just going to skip forward a few turns. Mighty Blow guys are based again. And and this turn was one of the turns where I considered uh, transitioning, uh, which was the ball had been in the halfway, uh, at the halfway line. And I was looking at this thinking, well, maybe this is a turn where we actually push the ball forward. It's not quite ready to come forward yet, um, but we need to start thinking about it. It's turn five, so my mindset has changed. And what I need to do is I need to deal with this agility uh, four dude. I can't bring the ball through safely until uh, this guy is knocked on, knocked on the floor. So, I'm going to blitz him with Mighty Blow. And base something else, so I've got an extra hit. Transitioning. Namto, how are you doing? Um, from being ball at the back to being ball forward. And I don't want this guy just lightning bolting and walking off. Bye, Hancock! He steps forward. He does get the knockdown on this one. Oh, by Weewa. Yes. Bye, Weewa. How's your mum? Doing well, thank you. Just finished my first semester in Germany. Oh, awesome. Mordecai, sorry. <laughs> Good. And over the course of the, the half, the Mighty Blow has started to just start to chip away at things. And it has just caused a couple of removals. So we got removal there. Um, and now, I can start to bring the ball a bit further forward. Because I want to run through this diagonal over here. All I need to do is do something with this throw roll. So I'm pushing everything in that direction, top left. Sorry, top right. So I can get round it. And we can smush this. Bring the ball forward. Oh, it comes forward next time. And we've hit this guy again. That's the third, third time I've hit so far on this half. There we go, got him. <sighs> Allegedly to tip more. <clears throat> I I can't comment on that. We will can't comment on that. This is a YouTube channel. But what I was trying to do in turn five was start to create the opportunity. So the ball, if I needed to, I could just hand it off and run over here, or over two turns I could bring the ball forwards. Um, but what we are going to see now is he is starting to try and bring his players around but I'm looking to try and run into this space over here um, and have been for the last couple of turns he's wasting his killer at the back um, yeah I think what has happened so this turn's an int th this turn and next turn are quite interesting I'm going to show you the turn and then I'm going to forward, forward it to the end of the turn so you can see what um, you know, did I achieve the goals that I was trying to set out to achieve so the first thing is bloody Right, there we go. So the ball's there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the ball can come somewhere along this line. Best place for the ball is one of these two squares. Um, it's probably this square here because it's further away than from his players. Um, so we can put the ball safely into scoring range. Um, so turn eight, I can walk the ball in if I need to. The next thing we need to do um, is consider, from a value perspective, how much, w um, how much value we can extract from blitzes. Well, we've got a mighty blow hit here. We've got a mighty blow hit on one of these, but it's not going to happen because he's outstrengthening me. 
So really, I'm only going to get two hits in this turn. One on that um, Skellington and one using one of these two Blitzers on, hopefully, his killer. Because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, go for it. So we can hit this on, um, on two dice. So I need to put a player here, Blitz from this square, so I'm pushing in this way, because bear in mind the ball is over here. I want to have to run as far around as possible. Um, and then we can just put a bit of a screen up with some bludge players in this sort of area here. So if there's a lightning bolt, um, I can probably recover it. Um, and overall, that's what we should be looking to do. And then finally, bring this guy out, if I can make the 3 plus 2 plus, um, if that's a knockdown. Overall, seems like a reasonable turn. Um, and, and that's the plan. So let's see whether I actually make it. Halfway through the turn, we do get the knockdown. And I have started to put on my screen. That really should have been a follow. And actually probably um, does bad things in turn 8 because it's not. So I've got three scoring threats. Viable. Um, and then we can bring this guy around. And I want to tag out the dirty player just for, for tagging it out. Jenny's been knocked out. Sorry, Jen. And the ball goes there. Fast forward to the start of my turn. There we go. So um, he made a whole heap of go for it, and I think he dodged away the loner from my dude as well. And the ball is in this particular area here, which is a bit of a problem because it's very sunny, so passing the ball is on a 3+. plus. Um, my agility 5, if you remember, got knocked out on first turn 1. So... Um, Looking at this in quite a lot, uh, a lot more detail, what is the best play? Um, because I didn't follow up here, I can't just push this dude out. Um, so, how on earth do you make it? So, do you just, do you just go fuck it? I'm going to take the three, up, the four up pick up. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Go for it, go for it. Hand it off. Maybe, maybe that's the best mathematical play. Um, is there some way of? Um, setting up enough assists into these squares, all of these squares, that I can two dice out the Tomb Guardian. Um, well, that one's got guard, so that's actually strength six. So I'd need an assist there, that takes me to strength four. I'd need one there for five, one there for six. Um, so I can make it one dice? Sounds a bit shit. Um, and how the hell am I going to move the guard? Because he's tagged. So, really, there's, there's not a lot on here. Um, I think, probably looking at this again a second time, the best way to do this is um, take the blitzer, dodge into this square, blitz the um, blitz this dude off, um, and then just walk out of the way. Stand this guy up, um, and then four plus with a reroll, dodge out, dodge there, and walk round and hand it off. Um, because I could try and make a two dice uphill, which is actually what I do do. I go for a, a two dice uphill on this, push it out of the way to make the pick up a three plus, um, and see what happens. There is one thing I want to just show you on this before we let it forward through. Uh, only the three please downfield guard, no. Um, my guard is there and there, and the other one's knocked out. So, this hit happens, and is a break, it's got a mighty blow, it's reasonable, it's reasonable, um, and it doesn't regen, so his killer is out for the rest of the game, it's quite important. I take the two dice uphill, so it's just simply a 3 plus pick up with a reroll, a 2 plus dodge, with a team reroll at this stage. Negative. And then it would have been another 2 plus dodge, a 2 plus handoff, and a 2 plus go for it. So I needed four twos. Once I'd made the three, I needed four twos with a team reroll. We didn't make it. Uh, nothing interesting happens on this turn, so we're going to start um, looking at it from the uh, next half. Now, with the killer gone, um, I decide to set up three bludge players on the line of scrimmage. And I look to try and um, 
take the same position with as with the orcs, which is let's just make it as difficult as possible for him to throw easy two dice bl blocks. I just don't want him, me handing over two easy two dice blocks. Um, I think I actually move. Yeah, I do. I take the whole thing and shift it slightly off center. Um, and the idea here is that if we get a perfect defense, um, the blodge players can scatter a bit easier because his five players will be here. So these squares, or that square is certainly free, that square only gets one hit, and that square only gets one hit. So on the eventuality that something unlikely happens, I can profit from it. And he's still setting up. But what he chooses to do here is he sets up very, very, very passively um, where he's protecting against the blitz. And at this point, that's probably the right thing to do because um, he's still got 11 players. All, all he needs to do is score and he wins the game. However, I'll just skip through that. There we go. Right, so he's thrown a block there and he's knocked me over. No knockdown. And and this is where it's in, very interesting tactically, which is the Camry coach chooses to bring the ball forwards and also chooses to um, try and attack a flank. So what he's trying to do is take the four team guardians and use them as a battering ram just to push through um, and try and push through the, the sideline. So I'll push through the rest of this heart. There we go. Now it's my go. So I'm setting up for a mighty blow hit here into another mighty blow hit here to see whether we can get a removal. And leaving a mighty Panic blow. Panic basket, Andy confirmed coronavirus case zero. Panic <laughs> basket. <laughs> um, so you see we've got a set up, set up for a free hit there, set up for a mighty blow hit there. And I've just made the, I've made it impossibly strong here for him to break through. Um, but I am threatening the side as well. Because I've still got 11 players, I can do that. And so he takes a um, takes his strategic choice, which is to push down the sideline, and he chooses to push it. Gets knocked down on the bludge. I think turn 10, I think it's my turn 11 that thinks quite good. Yeah, it's my turn 11. So he condenses into more of a ball. And we've got a free hit there, potentially. And that move is designed to try and put me off hitting the Tomb Guardian. Um, because if we can knock the Tomb Guardian over, maybe we can get in, fr in the front there. So I'm just going to let this play through, uh, which is... A load of two dice blocks on this to try and knock it over. Eventually, we do knock it over. Um, if we didn't knock it over, I just keep punching it until it went all the way over to the very edge, and we could just sort of just shove it out. Um, I don't think. Yeah, I haven't actually got a witch elf because the witch elf is knocked out and didn't return. So because we got the knockdown, I was pushing it away from play. If I hadn't got the knockdown, it would have gone there, and we'd have just kept pushing it all the way over the sideline until it ended up about there. Because we've got to go there, then there, then there, then there, and then against the sideline. It would have literally pounced all the way across. Now, at this point, I decided that it was probably a good idea to continue picking on the... Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm quite excited when he moves it to surf territory. Yeah. Um, because what I, all I'm trying to do is just keep making sure that they can't run into the centre of the field because if they run the centre of the field, um, his strength advantage can still t can tell. And um, just be contained enough down the sideline. So I only need... Look, these two players here are stopping the entire Camry team walking forwards, which means my rest of my team is just trying to stop that. Um... Be 
12. Must be turn 12. We're not ready yet. Not ready yet. Oh no. No, no, we are. So he's using his bribe, but he doesn't get a removal. <laughs> so, um, this is a very interesting turn. This is a very interesting turn. Um, what can we achieve from this turn? Anything? Nothing. And I decided the answer to that question is actually nothing. It was a trick question. Ha, gotcha. Um, because um, the Bludge players have been knocked over. And so I decided to put Bludge at the front this time. Because if we can then keep the front of the line secure, um, we might just be able to generate a lot of value by chain pushing something into something else and something around the corner and then bang. Okay. Um... Could I have surfed this skeleton? Um, I think, no, he moved into that square, so no. Unless you move one of, the, one of these front guys, but no. I think this is a removal. It is. Random removal. And this guy just needs to step out of the way and just be safe. That's all he needs to be, is because the guards are the people, the guards are my keys that unlock things, and then the uh, bludge players are the guys that do all the pretending, uh, the, the protecting, sorry. Uh, do the big guys have stun firm? No. Right. So he's, co he's come in here. Um, strength 5 versus Strength 3. Seems reasonable to me. I think he's had done of this. Wah! Go away. I don't want... I don't want to move anyone to... There we go. I don't want anyone to move to give away the move. Right. So... Um, this is the turn where we do stuff and the way I looked at this turn was um, I went there's a box there look it's a, it's a straight box so if you've got a box you also could have a box there right which means you've got a diagonal to work with here well if you've got a diagonal at any point you can then ping something into the right of that and it can go somewhere so maybe we could do something with that. So I just thought that's my thought, right? And my, my idea at this point then formed around that concept, which was there's a box there and there's a box there and maybe we can do something. So I've created a box there as well. This guy goes in there because he's got sidestep. So he's at the front of my cage now just in case weird stuff. And you see how the box is starting to form? Turn sidestep off. Get lucky with that, get a removal. And you guys might might say here, hang on a second, you you swap these two round. They're the wrong way around, Andy. You could have put the guard in here, which meant you got two dice there. And you're quite right. That would have been absolutely, completely a true, true thing to say. I could have done that. Um, the problem is, next turn, the guard gets knocked into there um, and potentially surfed. Potentially. But that's not that's not the right thing to do. So I'll just settle for one dice to try and surf the Tomb Guardian. Um, if that was a Skull or a both down, I probably would have re-rolled it.
Couldn't that have been surfed without the chain? But I suppose the chain is the extra bit. Um, the chain was the thing that guaranteed the surf. Guaranteed. Because he was stood here, remember? Well, I could have rolled a push by by filling it in and actually physically pushing the player into the yeah, against the edge of the pitch. Um, I, I got it to the point where it was going to probably be a surf. Now he has a really good turn here, um, where he nails one player, and he's knocked over another. And that's, that's made things a little challenging. Ruggy, thank you very much. Six months, halfway through to your free Andy. And this is a big dodge, because if that dodge fails, we're in two dice on the ball here. So, now we've got a player advantage, um, and we're also unconscious of the time, um, as in the time on the clock. <laughs> what we could do is we could start pushing into, the, pushing into his team and limiting what he can do. So, I'm going to do that. I'm going to push into his players and see what we can do. No knockdown with tackle there and no knockdown with tackle there. It's a bit of a shame, but never mind. So limiting that Team Guardian, I know we're giving away a hit, but actually now is the time to engage. Um, and if you notice, instead of being standoffish, we've now gone, everybody has gone in. And the only person that hasn't come in is this guy here, because he's my second screen, because that's where this guy wants to go. So absolutely everybody got involved. And he got knocked down. Bastard. And a stun. Uh, am I playing for the draw? No, no, I'm still hoping to win this one. Because all we need to do is just get the ball off his off his little grubby hands. Um, and we're fine. This, by the way, I like this just before he does it. Um, so I thought what he was trying to do here was blitz through. Um, and if he gets the removal, yeah, he can follow it up. If it's a removal, oh, just keep going then. But... Um, I didn't want him getting through that square, so I actually apothecary this to just to to limit where that guy can get to. Oops. So we'll just have to settle for another surf this turn because I can't quite get to the ball yet. This one, this one's fairly easy to spot. Push this guy into there. And that gets rid of the second Team Guardian. And then this guy can then come in through here and blitz. Oh, we do it in Mighty Blow. And in hindsight, I think I should have followed that as well. Because... Um, if I'd have followed that, I'd have just put him into a tackle zone and I could have filled that same square in. There was no there was no downside to not following, really. And there was a little bit of um, down... Sorry, there was no... There was no reason to not. Uh, Ruggy, yeah, it was to stop him running through that square, Ruggy. It was important. And, and at this point, I'm actually thinking, oh shit, I'm actually starting to run out of time here. Because for all our dominance on the sideline, and we have been chipping things away and getting rid of stuff and blah, blah, blah. Um, actually, we are not any closer to stealing the ball off him than we were on turn 12, turn 11. So, so we've got a bit of a problem here. And one of the first things I choose to go and do there is go and put a scoring threat in. It's not good enough, because obviously if my next action is a fail and then he pushes him out and blah, um, things go wrong. So what I want to do here is I need to put every single one of these five Camry under complete strain and stress to try and create something. Um, and one of the best things to do here is to take the sidesteppy guy and be tagging out one of these guys. I want some players in here. Well, if I want players in these three squares here, I need to blitz this. That tells me my blitz this turn is this Team Guardian, 
and I want to be blitzing it and pushing it away um, so I can get players into these squares no matter what happens. Um, since the next interesting thing that happens is um, my next turn, um, I'll skip forward. That's the end position pretty much. I think this guy dodges out and stands there. So I've, I've tagged everybody. We have tagged absolutely everybody. And then you can blitz away here. However, um, if you remember back to turn 12, what the most important the most important thing that happened on turn 12 um, was... Ugh, get off. Um, I was able to do stuff once you'd left players in contact. So... There is a way of doing stuff here just because the players are in contact. I'll give you a moment. See if you can spot what the rest of the play should be. So the first thing that you should be thinking about is can I surf the ball carrier? Well, by that last move I did, I've given myself a backstop. So hopefully you've said, maybe, maybe you can. But what you need to do is fill this square in here and you then have a T-shape to use and you can then push him out. Because you can't do it the other way around. You can't blitz here and push him there because you haven't got Frenzy. So, okay then. Well, in that case, that guy needs to push the Tomb Guard into this square. We need to not get a removal. And then I follow up and then I have my T-shape. My so it's just a simple case now of filling in all the squares to make that be a reality. And the most efficient way of doing it is to use the guard there. Fucking skulls. <laughs> and that all came about because we were able to fill in all the squares around the ball carrier. Um, and then the last thing we need, now we've used the reroll, is we need the ball to go somewhere generous for me. Haha! <laughs> Um, so he can walk it, pick it up and walk it in. And it just so happened, it did. So, we scored, and we won. Um, it could have not been a win. It could have been a draw. Uh, Rata played really well. Um, I think... How much Andy have I missed? Um, yeah, you've missed quite a lot of ham, I'm afraid. You might like this, actually. So... Um, I think the things I'd take away from this are um, if you're trying to control the sidelines then don't leave anything in contact because otherwise your opponent is able to then use those contact pieces um, and push players through them um, and leave all your players as supporting one another or leave them all disengaged and that works for any team not just um, having one or two players engaged. Picking aside, not trying to go down the middle. Yes. How did you manage an OCC? Did you die? Um, yeah. Um, it was not great. If there was one more turn, that would have been a full surf. Yes, damage. I think it would have been. It would have been. Um, it would have been very good. So yeah, that was an interesting game. Um, overall, stats-wise, uh, the um, Dark Elves threw 52 blocks and. He threw 32 blocks. I've actually looked at this one afterwards. I counted up how many Mighty Blow blocks we threw. Um, and the answer to that was 34. So we threw 34 hits, which were Mighty Blow. Um, so although we did get nine removals, that's because a lot of them were Mighty Blow blocks. Seems reasonable. Um, so yeah. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like and subscribe on YouTube. Um, I do title all the replay analysis videos, replay analysis. So if you like that, watch it again. Um, you can find them easily. Um, Thank you very much.